Good morning. My name is Paul Keith, and I'm the Vice President of Administration and Chief Operating Officer of the College of Biblical Studies. It is my privilege to welcome you to the 2022 College of Biblical Studies Convocation and Commencement Ceremony. In a few minutes, the board, faculty, and students will process in from the rear of the building. Please clear all the aisles so they can easily walk in. Also, please silence all cell phones. And without any further ado, I ask you to please rise for the academic processional.
Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Has anyone come to rejoice and be glad and celebrate in it? Come on, let's give these graduates a hand. Let's bless our God. The Bible says that everything that has breath should and can give God praise. So we invite you to sing with us and clap with us. And we're going to honor God together. We can begin by clapping together. Everybody in the building, come on. Let's clap together. This is graduation. We love our God. We're grateful for what God has done. Amen. Here we go. Come on, let's sing. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, CBS family. Let's sing it together. Lord, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. Let's sing it. People from every nation. From generation. From generation. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Lift your voice and say hallelujah. 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 doing in the lives of these graduates and their families. Let's take it back to the top. Everybody, Lord, you are good. Let's sing it. Lord, Lord you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, church, join us. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Just like CBS, people from every nation. People from every nation. nation and time. From generation. From generation to now, come on. Generation. We worship you. We worship you. Say you are good. Let's sing it. You are good. All the time. All the time. All the time. And all the time. Sing it again. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, you are. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, that's a great declaration. You're good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Now all of God's people together, let's sing. People, people from every nation. From generation. From generation, to generation. Come on, we worship you. We, we worship you. That's it. You. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you. We worship you. For who you are, For Lord. You are. That's it. That's it. Declare it again. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 For who you are, for who 
in this house. Hallelujah. Oh, gentlemen, if you would move your hats at this time. And please bow your heads with me as we go to invocation. Eternal God and Holy Father, we thank you that you are the perfect one. It is by your mighty hand and your works that we are here. We praise you, God, because we get an opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments and the milestones of these graduate students. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless them and all the supporters of this glorious event, this graduation. We pray, Lord, that you go before them as they graduate and prepare them and equip them to give more glory to your son. We ask, Lord, that you would prepare them for new experiences, new places, and new ministries. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to hold us and guide us as we walk with you throughout this journey. We ask, Lord, now that you bless this event, this ceremony as we go through it, and that you will continue to help us and show us how to glorify your son. It's in Jesus' marvelous and magnificent name that we pray forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, board, vice chair, James Cothran, for the wonderful prayer, and to Reverend Chad Brawley for an excellent music. Can we give them a round of applause? Thank you. It is truly a blessing to welcome you to the College of Biblical Studies 2022 Convocation and Commencement Ceremony. My name is Bill Blocker. I am the president of the College of Biblical Studies. We want to begin this ceremony with the end in mind, and this convocation celebrates the initiation of the semester from students also that gives them a glimpse of the future commencement of what is to come as we graduate our alumni graduation today. Convocation comes from the Latin prefix con, which means together, and vocare, which means to summon. Therefore, convocation is a calling together of a people or summoning together of a people. Commencement usually indicates the beginning of the graduate's career, uh, specifically after college. So commencement and convocation naturally fit together. It is a delight to have you with us today and joyous as we celebrate this momentous day. We are grateful for the opportunity to return to campus. Amen. Uh, we are also having, uh, having been separated from the campus from Houston for so many days in Houston and in Indiana for two years. CVS recently resumed on-ground classes for students with new high-flex te technology that allows students to join remotely. This year, we have the strength, strengthen our collaboration efforts by sharing physical space with the, and service with Dallas Theological Seminary on our Houston campus. Two schools, one campus. We'll be celebrating this collaborative effort with a ribbon cutting ceremony, and everybody's invited on Friday, October 27th at 12 noon. All are invited. Joining with me on our stage today is Dr. Emmanuel Lon, Vice President of Student and Enrollment Success, Dr. Lisa Stewart, Vice President of Discipleship, Dr. Joe Parle, our Provost, Mr. Paul Keith, our Vice President of Administration and Chief Operating Officer, and Twyla Gills, our Registrar. Graduates of CBS, this is the day that the Lord has made for you. It is your time to rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> Guess it is our prayer that you will be blessed during this time of celebration as we witness the milestone in the lives of our graduates. Graduates and students, you made it. I knew you could. As president of CBS, I have the honor today to make some special acknowledgments. 
First, we thank God for his unceasing faithfulness to the College of Biblical Studies and especially toward these candidates at graduation. Amen? I would like to also thank Houston First Baptist Church and my friend and colleague, Pastor Greg Mott, for the use of this beautiful facility. Thank you. In your program, you will see a dean's honor list of current students whose semester grade point averages merit special recognition. They may receive the, the certificate at the table after the ceremony, but I would like to ask those present in the audience today to stand and be recognized. Thank you. The Dean's Honor List students may please be seated. We hope one day you'll be here sitting, if you're not already, with one of these, as one of these graduates. Additionally, we want to express our thanks to our exceptional Board of Trustees. Will you all please stand to be recognized? Thank God for his excellent provision and dedication uh, and uh, the fact that we have also a brilliant faculty. Will you please stand to be recognized? We ask that you please remain standing. Uh, I also want to thank the time to acknowledge our CBS staff. Would you please stand and let us thank you for your faithful service to our students. We would like to recognize the pastors of our graduates. Are any of here, will you please stand to be recognized? Pastors. Thank you, you may be seated. And now we realize that no student goes through the rigors of an academic program along, alone. So on behalf of each and every candidate, please allow me to thank the spouses of all the graduates. Will you please stand to be recognized? Please remain standing. If you are son or daughter will you, of one of our graduates, will you please stand? If you are parent, step-parent of one of our graduates, you please stand. If you are any way related to any one of our graduates, will you please stand? Grandmother, aunt, uncle, cousin. And friends, will you also please stand? Graduates, will you please rise and thank all of the guests who have supported you on your journey? Thank you, you may be seated. And now, the reading of God's word by Dr. Marvin McNeese, chair of our general education department. Please stand for the reading of God's word, and gentlemen, join me in removing your hats. Por favor, póngase de pie para la lectura de la palabra. Y caballeros, favor de quitarse su birrete. 1 Corinthians 9, 19-23, New American Standard Version. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I may win more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law, to those who are without law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that by all means save some. I do all things for the sake of the gospel, so that I may become a fellow partaker of it. Primera Corintios 9, 19 a 23, Reina Valera. Por lo cual, siendo libre de todos, 
Me he hecho siervo de todos para ganar a mayor número. Me he hecho a los judíos como judío para ganar a los judíos. Y a los que están sujetos a la ley, aunque yo no esté sujeto a la ley, como sujeto a la ley para ganar a los que están sujetos a la ley. A los que están sin ley, como si yo estuviera sin ley. No estando sin ley de Dios, sino bajo la ley de Cristo, para ganar a los que están sin ley. Me he hecho débil a los débiles para ganar a los débiles. A todos me he hecho de todo, para, para que de todos modos salve a algunos. Y esto hago por causa del evangelio, para hacerme compartícipe de él. Thank you. Please be seated. Gracias. Puede sentarse. In a moment, we will share with you an address from our student speaker, Reverend Gabriel Q. Orr. <laughs> Gabriel serves our city as a vest veteran Houston police officer and serves the body of Christ at Second Baptist Church Woodway Campus under the leadership of Dr. Ed Young. Gabriel faithfully performed the duties of the Office of Vice President of Special Operations within our Student Council Ministry and was a member of the President's Men Mentorship Focus Group. Today, Gabriel is receiving his Bachelor of Science in Biblical Studies. Gabriel has also been accepted into the Bible Seminary's Master of Divinity program and will begin his graduate studies this fall. Joining Gabriel today is his wife, Karina Orr, and their one-year-old son, Gabriel Jr., along with his mom, Chris Edwards. Gabriel's mother-in-law, Emma Montezuma, is also graduating today. receiving her Bachelor of Science in Christian Leadership. Amen. After his speech, Dean of Students Luz Mar Cobos will lead us in bilingual worship of wonderful, merciful Savior, Salvador Maravilloso. And now, let's welcome our student speaker, Reverend Gabriel Q. Orr. To Dr. Blocker, members of the board, faculty and staff, to my fellow graduates, family and friends, it is indeed an honor to stand before you today on this most momentous occasion. Let me quickly thank each of you in attendance for your tremendous display of unwavering support over these past years, culminating in this day of celebration for the College of Biblical Studies graduating class of 2022. Moreover, if you know that the Lord is good, I invite you to join us as we offer praise to our great God for allowing us to complete this foundational milestone in purpose. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Watkins, for that gracious introduction. My journey here at CBS officially began Monday, May the 8th, 2017, at 6.15 p.m. in a course called English 1301. Your class, Dr. Watkins. Though I was convinced that I was embarking on a divine assignment, that evening I sat there internally doubting as to whether I even belonged. But that very night, you encouraged all of us with these visionary words, and I quote, since God has assigned you to be here, why not strive for excellence? 
With that timely spoken word, it was as though a huge wave crashed into the building, collapsed the walls of our classroom, and swept me away on this great adventure. Now, there were times where I got discouraged, times where I felt overwhelmed, even times of distraction along the way. Still, that night, I caught the vision. And that wave has carried me all the way to this podium today. Thank you, Jesus. I'm reminded of King Solomon's words in Proverbs 25 and 11. Like apples of gold and settings of silver is a word spoken in right circumstances. And now to this graduating class, a word of exhortation for this occasion. Two words, in fact. What's next? Having persevered through the devastation of a citywide 500-year flood named Hurricane Harvey in order to be seated here today, I simply ask class, what's next? Having pressed on with heavy hearts in the face of nationwide racial and a social unrest to be seated here today, again, I ask, What's next? Having succeeded in the face of sickness, social distancing, the loss of loved ones taken too soon in the wake of this still lingering worldwide pandemic called COVID-19, yet again I ask, class, what's next? And even on today, after all of the pump and circumstance, after we've lifted our voices in praise and thanksgiving to Christ Jesus for allowing us to rise above all these challenges and more that we might be seated here today, what's next? Thank you, sister. You know, as I contemplated this simple yet profound question, I was reminded of another graduating class from the pages of Scripture. Likewise, they too completed their own foundational milestone, which inaugurated a time of corporate and exuberant praise unto God. Well, you see, the College of Tanakh class of 536 B.C. completed a literal foundation. It's recorded right there in Ezra chapter number 3, verses 10 and 11. Now when the builders had laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord according to the direction of King David of Israel. And they sang praising and giving thanks to the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness is upon Israel forever. And all of the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. What came next for God's people? Simply put, nothing. Immediately, the people of the land began to push back against their purpose. In Ezra 4.24, we learned that King Artaxerxes issued a cease and desist order, if you will, effectively halting the building assignment. Class, after having laid the foundation of the house of the Lord, there was nothing erected on that foundation until 520 B.C., some 16 years later. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul exhorts the body of Christ to not only learn from, but also to avoid Israel's mistakes. And so today I stand on the authority of scripture and emphatically declare, let's build up the body of Christ upon the foundation laid here today. Let us build courageously, let us build continually, and let us build completely. Class, I say to each of you in full confidence, you are seated here today, clothed in dark robes, because you belong. I resound the words of Dr. Debbie Watkins. Since God has assigned you to be here, why not strive? 
for excellence. Let us avoid the temptation of giving up when the people of this land push back against truth. Yes, we can expect some opposition along the way, but rest assured that the foundation laid here today is your green light to build. May we build courageously, never compromising the, the message of the gospel to bring it in step with today's inclusive culture. May we build continually. Now is not the time to sit back and enjoy the foundation. Instead, may we roll up our sleeves and get to work. Finally, may we build completely. Your assignment of building the body of Christ will not be complete until King Jesus calls your name on final graduation day. And there, class, you'll be seated in glory, clothed in white robes, where you will belong. Thank you. CVS family, praise the Lord for everything he has done for us. Because of, in spite of all of the challenges, right, all of the trials, all of the tribulations, yet he has allowed you and me to stand here today as testimonies of his grace. So let's worship our wonderful, our merciful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Solar, comforter, keeper, spirits we long to embrace. You offered hope when our hearts had hopelessly lost the way. Well, we hopelessly lost our way. Yeah. 
al alma, Señor. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. Was that not breathtakingly beautiful? Thank you, Dean Kobos. It's amazing the talents that our staff have. I also want to thank CBS student Reverend Gabriel Orr for that wonderful and very powerful message. To God be the glory. It's my privilege to introduce you to my friend and my boss, our commencement speaker, Dr. Bill Blocker. Dr. William Bill Blocker became the fourth president of the College of Biblical Studies in Houston, Texas in 2012, just 10 years ago. CBS is duly accredited through the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools Commission on Colleges, otherwise known as SACCOC, and the Association of Biblical Higher Education, also known as ABHE. Under Dr. Blocker's leadership, CBS expanded offerings to begin including online degree programs, the addition of the BS, Bachelors of Science in Christian Leadership, completely taught in Spanish. And you're going to see some graduates today from that program. A Bachelors of Science in Women's Ministry, certification as an ACBC training center, a dual degree program with Dallas Theological Seminary and the Emerging Leaders Initiative. CBS also acquired and merged with Crossroads Bible College in Indianapolis and Fort Wayne, Indiana under Dr. Blocker's leadership. With this merger, CBS now has four locations, Houston, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and online programs. Dr. Blocker earned a Master in Divinity from Chicago Theological Seminary and a Doctor of Ministry in Christian Education from Dallas Theological Seminary. Dr. Blocker currently serves on the following board, the Association of Biblical Higher Education, as well as the United World Missions and the Advisory Board of Overseas Council. Dr. Blocker is married to his high school sweetheart, who here is here in attendance, Zelda Blocker. This might be his greatest accomplishment of all. They will be celebrating 38 years of wedded bliss and having an anniversary this year. So <clears throat> the Blockers have seven adult children and three grandchildren. Please give a warm CBS welcome for Dr. Bill Blocker. You can see why Dr. Paul gets paid the big bucks, right? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Paul, for that wonderful introduction. And uh, he has stated that, uh, yes, uh, we are celebrating 38 years, and I just want to acknowledge my wife and my friend and my colleague, uh, Zelda. Uh, she's been on this train for a long time, and she's the reason I'm here. So thank you, Zelda, for all that you do. <laughs> After raising five kids, uh, what can we say? All right. Um, thank you, alumni. You are alumni now. Um, you are here. You are here, no longer there, you are here. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we begin? Father, we take this time today, pause, reflect, ponder, and the most important thing of all, 
to say thank you for how you have navigated these, your students, through the halls of academia. You've equipped and prepared them for what lies ahead. And according to Second Peter, you have given them everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Pray now that your words will permeate through their hearts and encourage all of us that, Lord, we can do nothing without you, but with you all things are possible. We dedicate this time to you and say, have your way. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. During a sermon, a country preacher said to his congregation, now let the church walk. And then Deacon Jones jumped up out of his seat and said, amen, let the church walk. Preacher then said, let the church run. Deacon got up again and said, amen, brother pastor, let the church run. And then the pastor went on to say, now let the church fly. And the deacon start running up and down the aisles and says, amen, let the church fly. And the preacher said, now it's time to give money to make sure the church is going to fly. <laughs> and the deacon said, let the church walk. Let the church walk. As interesting and funny as that may be, some of us can recognize today that many of us have said, let the church walk. Graduates, you're here today not simply to make sure the church walks. Your goal is to make sure your training, your sacrifice, and your desire to please God enables the church that it may fly. The reality is this. We as believers are so consumed today with exercising every ounce of our religious and financial liberties that we have become complacent in our witness, comfortable in our selfishness, and careless in our walk. You have spent many hours in your study. You've passed all the requirements needed, graduates. Many, if not all of you, cannot even calculate the number of hours you spent studying up until this point, the number of books that you have read and papers that you have written. Question today is how do you make the most of your ministry efforts as you begin this new chapter? How do you plan to make the biggest impact for the cause of Christ. Today, I want to talk about simply letting it go for the sake of the gospel. Letting it go for the sake of the gospel. As you cross this stage today and move on in life, I want you to consider if you're willing to give up some of your own rights for the cause of Christ. We here are going to take the time and go through the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Corinthians, chapter 9, to see how he himself denied some of his rights, sacrificing his religious liberties and dis disciplining himself to become a slave that he may win some to Christ. Next, I want to quickly examine his method and his motive. And then I want to actually turn around and then challenge you. Highlight some principles that may encourage you as you move to the next chapter in your calling. My prayer today, CBS graduates, and everybody that's gathered here today, is that as believers in the gospel of Christ Jesus, we will be able to examine our own hearts and rid anything that's in us that may hinder the forward progress of the gospel of Christ Jesus. I fully believe 
that when we comprehend the depth of God's love and how he has showered it in our hearts and upon us and the price that Christ had to pay to save us from our sins, we should be compelled to limit our rights in order to lead others for the sake of the gospel. Principle number one, very simple. We need to understand the difference between essentials and non-essentials. Paul's freedom starts in his financial, with his financial rights to be supported back in that ver- first verse all the way through 14 of chapter 9. He says, I am, am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus as our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? Immediately, Paul is going on, to, on the fence because the, the, the people in that town are pushing him and challenging his integrity. And he goes off by starting by saying, look at me, I am free. He's not talking here about his religious, he's not talking about his Roman citizenship. He's talking about what it feels like to be free when you run and encountered a close intimacy with Christ. He knows that who the Son sets free is free indeed. He clearly understands all of the essentials and the non-essentials. And you can see through verses 15 through 18, he explains why he is not exercising his rights there in Corinth. Number one, he says that, you know what? I have deep convictions about my integrity. He goes on to explain my compulsion to proclaim the gospel. And even listens, he enlists a, a woe, woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Thirdly, his full right to freely preach without charge, that he may have his own power to limit the power of the gospel. And we come to verse 19. Paul moves from this financial limitation. He goes on and you can see the context of why he's writing so, so succinctly and so powerfully because he has made a conscious decision. You can read that in chapter eight. He says, I'm gonna limit. I didn't charge you for anything, but he moves beyond the financial limitations of his freedom because he then says, for I, though I am free from all men, pause. Yes, he's free from the obligations of those who would think he's in it for money. He is also free from the aspects of the traps of when people give you money, the strings that are attached to it. He says, I am free, but here's the contrast, the paradox. I have made myself a slave to all. And that rendering of the word is kind of daunting because nobody wants to hear that word. Not servant there, slave. A voluntary submission to bondage. You got to understand the context here because Paul, what he's getting at, he's fully aware of what's happening in that city of Corinth because the Roman consul Lucius has destroyed the Corinth city way back in 146 B.C killing most of the Greek male population and selling the women and children into slavery. And in 44 BC, shortly before his assassination, Julius Caesar decided that he was gonna establish a Roman colony right there in Corinth. In the time of Paul, one third of the population were slaves. He begins understanding that I'm giving up all of this for one simple reason, for the sake of the gospel. Second Corinthians 4, 5, Paul says, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, our Lord, ours as a bond servant of Jesus Christ. Graduates, believers today, are you willing to give up whatever that is in your own personal life so the gospel may flow through you 
that your light may shine bright, that others may see the Christ living in you. Jesus tells his disciples in Matthew 20, 26, but whosoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you shall be your slave. Just as the son of man did not come to be servant, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. A slave. A businessman once asked Lorne Sani, the then president of Navigators, how he could know if he has acted upon a servant-like attitude. And the answer was, but how you act when you're treated like one. How much are you willing to surrender for the cause of Christ? Understanding what's essential from non-essential. Graduates, please don't get hung up on the things that don't really matter. Number two, once you understand the difference between the non-essentials and the essentials, let go of the non-essentials. Let it go. Don't be fixed, follow with me, on form. When I mean form, non-absolutes. So many times we fill in the gray areas and we call them essentials, they're not. When I say the absolutes, I mean absolutes. Those things will not change. Those biblical principles that will last until eternity, they will always be there. But when I say non-absolutes or non-essentials, those forms, methods, and structures that should change in order to bury carry the absolutes, functions, and directives of God's words. Paul says, to the Jew, I became... Don't misquote this, as a Jew. To those who are under the law, as under the law. Though not being under the law myself, to those who are without the law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law. Let's back up for a second. To the Jew, he's talking here, not just basically the, the rabbi Jews. He's speaking succinctly here about their ethnicity, their nationality. He's zeroing in. And then he goes to the next one. He says, those with the law. Now he's talking about those who subject themselves to the Mosaic law. That includes even some Gentiles who, who decided to follow those practices. Then those without the law, he's talking about primarily the unbelievers, the Gentiles. And then he says to the weak. Interesting enough now, he doesn't say as, he said, I became weak. He must know that when we become weak, Christ becomes strong. You can read that as he goes in 2 Corinthians, he, he highlights that theme. He says, I've become weak. He summarizes all of this, these things, and he highlights some things that really is just so powerful by saying, I have become as. What are you willing to become so that Christ can become in someone else? Most of us, if we would admit, we don't like change. (laughs) Change only benefits the person that's causing change. Have you noticed that? (laughs) Amen, somebody. Faculty are shaking their head over there. (laughs) Unfortunately, in our unwillingness to change because we have always done things our way, this way, forever. It causes division, strife, and ultimately it hurts the body of Christ. As CBS graduates, as you go out into the world, my prayer for you today is that you become ministry game changers. Do not sit on the sideline. Do not settle for the status quo. Move and change the world through Christ. 
Sometimes you're going to have to go the extra mile. Even if you're all by yourself. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 2.9, he reminds the church in Thessalonica of how he removed the obstacles out of the way. He says, for you recall, brethren, our labor and hardship, how working night and day so that that we would not be a burden to any of you. We proclaim to you the gospel of God. Your willingness to serve all nations is a testimony of your love for Christ. As you become Christ-like to all men, only God knows what he will do as the Holy Spirit is wrought in your life. D.L. Moody once said, the measure of a man is not how many servants he has, but how many men he serves. Here's an important question. How many people have you served? How many people have you witnessed to in the past week? Do I not say the past year? Thirdly, not only do you need to actually understand the differences between the essentials and the non-essentials, get rid of those non-essentials. But then you need to check your engine. Ask God, as he says, as David says in 139th Psalm, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there's any wickedness, any waywardness, and then lead me, not my way, but in the way everlasting. Make sure as you're asking for the checkup that your motivation is not money. Mission over money. Make sure that your heart is not bent on projects, but it's more passionate about people. Paul reminds the church in Corinth, he says, I'm not writing this epistle that you can give me money, no. And he goes and tells all these purpose clauses that he just strings together. Verse 19 says, let me tell you what motivates me, what revs up my engine engine that moves me to, to keep pushing on in storms and battles and wars and people attacking me from every side. He says, so that I may win more. And then he characterizes, verse 20, so I might win Jews. So I may win those who are under the law. So I may win those without the law, that I may win the weak. And I love the way he poetically words this, so that I may be all means, by all means, save some. He starts up with this wide funnel and he says, I'm going to service everybody that comes in my path. And I realize that everybody won't, won't be converted, but I'm going to keep serving them. I'm going to keep serving them. And out of all those people that I may save some. Can you imagine graduates starting today if you just reach one? Paul says this as he plays on these words. I have become all things to all men. Greek says panta. All things panta. All men pasen. All means pantos. What's the significance? What is he trying to communicate? He's putting his heart into every single thing he does. He doesn't say some things. He says all things. He doesn't say certain sect of men or women. He says all men. And I love this, by any means necessary. What is God calling you to lay down in your life in order to help save the saved grow? 
and lead the unsaved to Jesus? What is he asking you to put aside? Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let's run with endurance the race that is set before us. Graduates, I don't know what those obstacles are in your life. Believers, I don't know what those obstacles are in your life. Board members, faculty, staff, I don't know what the obstacles are in your life, but they must be put aside. Maybe it's fear of change. It may be laying aside your comfort, even in your retirement. It may be laying aside your pride because you've been there and done that, doesn't want to go back again. It may be putting aside stereotypes. It may even be putting aside your failures. Whatever it is, all these things must be pushed aside. Whatever is hindering you from bringing God glory, from loving him and loving people, put it aside. There was one man who was an old, 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 quiet man who sat by the wayside outside the church and he was watching while people walked by. And as people walked by in their dressed up suits and their long dresses and their fancy hats and they paraded inside the church, the old man just watched and waited. Not one person stopped to ask, may I help you? Not one person paused to say how you're doing today. Not one person even greeted him as he went inside. And as he approached the church, and the church was packed, the pastor got up from the pulpit and graciously said, we have a guest preacher today. And his topic is going to be caring for the least of these. I don't know about you. I don't want to be in a position where I let a God divine moment pass by. Learning essentials from non essentials, letting go of the non essentials, and checking your engine to lay aside anything that hinders you from the gospel. For the sake of the gospel, let it go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. As we think about how you have entered our life, we did not choose you. You chose us. Before the foundations of the earth was laid, you had purposed us that we would be, Lord, engrafted into your body saved us from the condemnation, Lord, that we rightfully deserve. And the love that you have shown through the dying of your son, Christ Jesus, has positioned us now in high places, Lord. We, we are in heavenly places and we thank you for your love. But now, God, we realize that salvation came at a cost. Not that we can do anything to deserve our salvation, but because of your love that you showed upon us, we are willing to say wherever you tell us to go, we will go. Lord, forgive us for those idiosyncrasies, for those man-made traditions, for those stereotypes and all those things that we put in a way that hinder us from doing what you've called us to do. May we be ready and willing to go and say, I will do anything 
for the sake of the gospel is our prayer. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Dr. Blocker. This is not on the script, but I can say after 10 years of serving with him, he's not only spoken that message, but he's lived that message of servant leadership with us. Our hearts are overflowing as we have the privilege of witnessing the commencement ceremony of our Bible certificate, associate, and bachelor's degree candidates. In the middle of your program, you will see a list of the names and candidates for graduation. As indicated in the program, we will announce a Bible certificate candidate first, followed by an associate candidates, followed by the bachelor's degree programs. Some of our associate and bachelor's candidates have achieved certain grade point averages that warrant the designation of graduating with honors. Associate candidates graduating with any honors designation are further distinguished by the wearing of a red honors cord with their regalia. Bachelor of Science candidates graduating with any honors designation are distinguished by the wearing of a gold honors medal with their regalia. The President's Men is an initiative started by the President to disciple and mentor young men in understanding God's purpose as they journey through their theological education they will be identified with a green and white cord. We also will be acknowledging those who are, have served our country and served others um, with a red, white, and blue honor cord. CBS commencement ceremonies seek to balance dignity and celebration. I know you've gone to commencements where um, you hear someone say, please reserve all of your clapping until the very end of the commencement. We don't do that here. You are welcome to cheer for and clap for your graduates. They have worked very hard for this day and we want their work to be acknowledged. On the other hand, you've been to commencements where people have bullhorns and they're kind of screaming all sorts of nonsense after the person has already left the stage. We don't do that here either. So we want to make sure that every graduate, their name is heard, that they are able to walk across the stage and to be acknowledged for all of their efforts. The graduates will be emerging from my left and they will proceed across the stage. We have arranged for official photos and I do ask you to please respect our graduates by not coming up to the aisles to take pictures. And yes, I'm speaking to you. I know that some of you think you might be an exception, or, but I do ask you to not come up to the aisles to take pictures. <clears throat> you may come to one of the vacant rows that you see in these sections to my left or to my right and take pictures, but I ask you to go into the row, take the picture, and then return to your chair, but please do not come up to the aisles. Today we are honoring two recipients of the Bible Certificate. One will be announced now, and another is attending virtually and be announced later in the program. We will be announcing all of our virtual candidates, Bible Certificate Associate and Bachelors, at the end of the announcements of students. Hoy vamos a honrar a dos estudiantes que han completado el certificado de estudios bíblicos. Uno va a ser anunciado ahora, Y el otro está asistiendo virtualmente y será anunciado más adelante en el programa. Since our Bible certificate degree programs are offered in English and Spanish, I will be, translate portions of the ceremony for the benefit of the Bible certificate associate and bachelor students. Puesto que el nuestro certificado asociado y bachillerato están ofrecidos en inglés y español, Voy a traducir esta porción de la ceremonia para el beneficio de los que reciben a los asociados de estudios bíblicos y para sus familias. The Bible Certificate is a 30-hour program in Bible and Theology in English and Spanish designed for Sunday school teachers, missionaries, and lay leaders in our churches. 
CBS considers this certificate to be the first step in completing an associate's or bachelor's degree. El Certificado de Estudios Bíblicos es un programa de 30 créditos en Biblia y Teología en inglés y español que es diseñado para maestros de escuela dominical, los misioneros y líderes laicos en iglesias. Este certificado es un paso en el proceso de completar los requisitos para un asociado de estudios bíblicos. I will now ask Dr. Blocker to stand and I will call the recipient who will come forward and walk uh, up to the stage to accept this award. Pido al Dr. Blocker, presidente del Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos, que se ponga de pie. Yo llamaré al estudiante que recibirá este certificado para pasar adelante a recibir su certificado. The first recipient of the Bible certificate is Jose Guillén. El primer estudiante es Jose Guillén. Let's give him an applause. Un aplauso, por favor. Congratulations, Jose. Felicidades, Jose. Today, we are also honoring a group of gra uh, recipients of the Associates of Biblical Studies in Spanish as well as English in our commencement. Hoy, nosotros honramos a nuestros estudiantes que han completado el Asociado de Estudios Bíblicos del Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos. The Associate of Biblical Studies is a 60-hour program in English and Spanish designed for Sunday school teachers, lay leaders, and missionaries in churches. El Asociado de Estudios Bíblicos es un programa de 60 créditos en Biblia y Teología en Inglés y Español que es diseñado para maestros de escuela dominical, los misioneros y líderes laicos en las iglesias. And now we are about to witness the graduation of our fine class of Associate of Biblical Studies candidates. Y ahora que estamos a punto de presenciar la graduación de nuestra excelente clase de candidatos para asociado en estudios bíblicos. Professors Esmeralda Flamenco and Debbie Harper will call out the names of our graduates. I will ask them to both stand now and I approach the stage so we can recognize them. Profesores Esmeralda Flamenco y Debbie Harper irán llamando a los nombres de los graduandos. Les pideré a ellos que se pongan de pie y vengan a la plataforma para que podamos reconocerlos. Let's give them a hand. Un aplauso, por favor. I would like to now ask the president of the College of Biblical Studies, Dr. Bill Blocker, to please join me. Ahora me gustaría pedir al presidente del Colegio de Estudios Bíblicos, el Dr. Bill Blocker, que por favor se una a mí. Will the candidates for graduation with an associate of biblical studies degree please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, I am pleased to certify on behalf of the faculty that these students, including those in abstentia, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work at the College of Biblical Studies, and are candidates for the Associate of Biblical Studies degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I, as president of the College of Biblical Studies, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, hereby confer to you, graduating students, the Associates of Biblical Studies degree with all rights, honors, and privileges attached thereto, congratulations. Our ushers will now escort the associate students to the stairs on my left that lead up to the stage. Out of abundance of caution for the health of all involved, Dr. Blocker will hand the students their diploma, but will not shake their hands, but he will pose for a picture with them. As they proceed to the stage, we would like to present a video that describes the College of Biblical Studies.
Since 1976, the College of Biblical Studies has provided an affordable, biblically-based college education to a diverse student body. And CBS is one of just a few Bible colleges with both regional and national accreditation. A top-rated education with a biblical foundation means students will be equipped to lead with wisdom and confidence. At CBS, you'll gain a competitive advantage in navigating the realities of an ever-changing world. Classes are offered online or at one of our three campus locations in Houston, Indianapolis, and Fort Wayne. CBS offers several options to fit your needs. Choose from one of our bachelor's or associate degree programs or our certificate program to equip you for your ministry or business career. We even have degree programs taught entirely in the Spanish language. Or, for personal enrichment, enjoy one of our non-credit spiritual growth classes. At CBS, you'll learn to understand the Bible and its truth in such a way that it transforms your life forever. Students of all ages, ethnicities, and backgrounds form lifelong bonds with classmates and professors. Over 25,000 students have experienced this life-defining transformation. National reach with an international impact. Our students impact lives and transform communities. If you have a desire to change your world, Come see for yourself what transformation looks like. The College of Biblical Studies. Truth. Training. Transformation. Our first graduate is Seir Cantu. <laughs> Hernan Gonzalez Highest Honors. Anthony Heath. Darren Jones. Joseph Ledesma. John Rivas. Randall Royal. Lester Shannon. He's on me, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Michael Charles Smith. Roman Tigula. Joshua Welch.
Also today, we are witnessing an outstanding group of students that are marking the completion of their Bachelor of Science degree at the College of Biblical Studies. Over the past few years, these bachelor's candidates have labored very hard and they have finished well. Congratulations. Hoy también somos testigos de un grupo destacado de estudiantes que completan su programa de licenciatura. En los últimos años, estos candidatos para el título de licenciatura en ciencias han trabajado y están hoy aquí habiendo terminado bien. The College of Biblical Studies offers a Bachelor's of Science degree of Biblical Studies, Biblical Counseling, Biblical Studies in Christian Leadership in English and Spanish, and our Accelerated Degree Completion Program, a Bachelor of Science degree in Organizational Leadership or in Women's Ministry, Biblical Studies with minors in Biblical Counseling, Women's Ministry, and Pastoral Ministries in our traditional program. We also, as was mentioned earlier, have four plus one degrees in which someone can get a bachelor's and a master's in five years with Dallas Theological Seminary. El Colegio Estudios Bíblicos ofrece el título de licenciatura en ciencias en estudios bíblicos, consejería bíblica, y en estudios bíblicos liderazgo cristiano en inglés y español, en nuestro programa acelerado de finalización de título y el título de licenciatura en ciencias en liderazgo organizacional, ministerios de mujeres y estudios bíblicos con concentración secundaria en consejería bíblica, predicación y ministerios pastorales en nuestro programa tradicional. Typically, commencement ceremonies honor graduates who are anticipating the beginning of their career or ministry after receiving a degree. CBS is proud that most of our graduates and students are already involved in ministry and vocational careers. They do not come to CBS so they can begin their ministry. They come to CBS to expand the impact of their ministry. Típicamente las ceremonias de graduación honran a los graduados y anticipan el comienzo de sus carreras después de recibir un título. CBS se enorgullece en que la mayoría de nuestros estudiantes ya se encuentran activamente involucrados en posiciones y ocupaciones del ministerio. Ellos no vienen a CBS para que puedan iniciar su ministerio. Ellos vienen para que puedan expandir el impacto de sus ministerios. With that in mind, please allow me to brag a little bit on this distinguished group of men and women. Con ese pensamiento en mente, permítame aldear un poquito sobre este distinguido grupo de hombres y mujeres. Here's just a sample of some of these duties that our graduates are currently undertaking. Three are already senior pastors. Two are associate or assistant pastors. Five are women's ministers. Two are music ministers or prayer ministers. Five are evangelism and young adult ministers, and eight are teaching ministers. Lo siguiente es solo una muestra de las tareas que actualmente estos graduandos están realizando. Tenemos tres pastores principales, dos pastores asociados o asistentes de pastor, cinco en el Ministerio de Mujeres, dos en Ministerio de Música y Oración, cinco en Ministerio de Evangelismo y Jóvenes Adultos, y ocho en el Ministerio de Enseñanza. This class also has a number of graduates who are employed outside of ministry as well. Seven are employed in the business sector. Eight in public service and nonprofit organizations. Six are self-employed. We have two first responders, including a nurse and a police officer, one in education, and 92% are ethnic minorities. Esta generación también tiene individuos empleados fuera del ministerio. Siete empleados en el sector empresarial, ocho en el servicio al público y en organizaciones de sin fines de lucro, 
Seis son trabajadores independientes. Dos en primera línea de respuesta, incluyendo una enfermera y un oficial de policía. Uno en el sector educativo. 92% son minoría étnica. I would now ask that the president of the College of Biblical Studies, Dr. Bill Blocker, please join me again. Will the candidates for graduation with a Bachelor of Science degree please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, I am pleased to certify on behalf of the faculty that these students, including those in abstentia, have met the necessary prerequisites, have completed the required work at the College of Biblical Studies, and are candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. Upon the recommendation of the faculty, I as president of the College of Biblical Studies, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees in accordance with the laws of the state of Texas, hereby confer to the graduate stu graduating students the B Bachelor of Science degree with all rights, honors, privileges thereto. Congratulations. Our ushers will now escort the baccalaureate students to their stairs on my left. They lead up to the stage. They will pick up their diploma, walk across the stage, and then um, they will uh, take a picture with Dr. Blocker. Just as the body of Christ is adorned for their wedding day, many of our graduates come to CBS from other nations as depicted by the flags displayed. Many of our graduates have prepared their entire life for this moment. We are proud of our graduates who are the hands and feet of Jesus, who take the sound of good news and the love of the King all over the earth. Our first bachelor's graduate is Mirna Rebeca Acevedo de Castillo. Maxi Anderson Jr., summa cum laude. Kennedy Asante Vercock. Jared Brooks. Solmaira Castillo. <laughs> Belia Covarrubias. Sonia González Díaz.
Nikita Edmondson. Sandra Flores Guzmán. Marina Jared. Jason John. Giovanna Manning. Irma McWell. <laughs> Jackie Mims. Emma Montezuma. <laughs> Patricia Nunn. Gabriel Orr. Noelis Brinco. Say it again. Noelis. Noelis Brinco. Noelis. Noelis. Noelis Rincon. Lilia Rodriguez. Renolfo Javier Tejeda. <laughs> Nestor Armando Torres. Beverly Wesley Jackson. <laughs> Patricia Williams. Lauricia Young. Let's give everyone a round of applause. Congratulations. For some students, it was necessary to join us virtually. Their picture will appear on the screen as their names are called out. Elijah Hill.
Bertrand Cole. and Sean Slay. Graduates, we have one more piece of business we need to address. Will the graduates of the associate degree programs as well as the graduates of the bachelor's of science programs please rise. At my signal, I would like each of you in unison to shift your tassel moving it from right to left of the side of your motherboard as a symbolic act of your academic accomplishment and graduation. You may do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to present to you the 2021-22 graduating class of the College of Biblical Studies. I'd like to ask the faculty to encircle the graduates, laying hands on those in the outer seats. Graduates, please remain seated and hold the hand of the graduate next to you. And for those attending remotely, if you are physically present with a graduate, I would like to ask you to extend your hands towards that graduate. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who preserves the covenant and loving kindness for those who love you and keep your commandments, let your ear now be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant, which I am praying before you now on behalf of these graduates, your servants. I pray that you will use them in a mighty way to further your kingdom here on earth. Help them to remember the things that they have been taught from your precious word. Help them to be careful not to turn from your word to the left or to the right so that they might have success wherever they go. Help them to meditate on your word day and night and to be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make their way prosperous, and then they will have success. Wherever they go, help them to be ever mindful that you are with them, and will guide them and comfort them. Let the words of their mouth and the meditation of their hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. The faculty may now return to their seats. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Lisa Stewart, and I have the honor and the pleasure. Congratulations to all of you. I have the honor and the pleasure to serve as Vice President of Discipleship. And so to our graduates, I say congratulations. Today is a special day because it represents the culmination of a great deal of work in your studies, and a time to look forward to your next achievement. Amen. 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 This event begins a new relationship with you as graduates here at CBS because you are now alumnus of the College of Biblical Studies. 
You have all the rights and privileges therein. So the College of Biblical Studies is so proud of you and all of your accomplishments. Today, a few select baccalaureate graduates will be inducted into the Delta Epsilon Chi Honor Society. The purpose of Delta Epsilon Chi is to encourage and honor graduates from accredited institutions of the Association for Biblical Higher Education by recognizing all of our outstanding academic scholarship students, those who have approved Christian character and Christian leadership ability. No more than 7% of graduates may be nominated in any given year. The CBS faculty committee selected the following three honorees who meet the criterion of exhibiting Christian character, leadership ability, and at least a cumulative grade point average of 3.3 on a four-point scale or its equivalent. I will ask the honorees to come to the stage individually when their name is called to pick up their medals along with the Delta Epsilon Key certificate Pause for a picture with our president, Dr. Bill Blocker, and then return to your seats. The first honoree is Lilia Rodriguez. Please come to claim your certificate and pen. <laughs> Congratulations. The second honoree is Adriana Knight, and Adriana was unable to be with us today due to other uh, prior commitments. The third honoree is Guinevere Croker, and she also was unable to be with us due to another commitment but I'd like to welcome all three of them to the Delta Epsilon Key. Would you give them all a hand? Today, we are also announcing the honorary alumni, I'm sorry, alumni selection to the Delta Epsilon Key Honor Society. The honorary alumnus must have graduated at least 10 years ago. We have two honorees who are here today. I will call their names, ask the honorees to come to the stage, pick up their certificate and medal, pause for a picture with our president, Dr. Bill Blocker. The first honoree is my friend and colleague, Michael Haywood. Michael is also our current chaplain here at the College of Biblical Studies. Amen, congratulations. The second honoree is Deborah Tangler. Deborah is the Chief Relation Officer at Arrow Child and Family Ministries. Would you congratulate both of them? Now I'm going to ask you to stand for one more worship song as well as our closing hymn. So we'll have two songs and then remain standing for our benediction. Our candidates will recess outside so they will go that way towards that exit sign. Please wait to leave in order to give the candidates sufficient time to arrive outside. And for your safety, please meet outside in the foyer out there. If you would, let's stand as we sing this final song of worship. It says, the Son of God be glorified, the Son of God be lifted high. Son of God, be magnified. Can we congratulate these graduates one more time? Amen. Congratulations to you.
This is a call and response song, so we can sing it together. Very easy little song. It says, the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. You want to catch it with us? The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Would you join us? Come on. The Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. We say the Son of God is lifted high. The Son of God is lifted high. Can we open our mouth and give our God some praise? We lift you high in this place. Jesus, you're wonderful. You've been so good. And we lift you. We honor you today. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God. The Son of God be magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Come on and join us. Say, the Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Let's magnify Jesus. The Son of God is magnified. The Son of God is magnified. Come on. The Son of God. Magnified. The Son of God. So we is declare, magnified. say, oh.
Great is thy faithfulness. Is anyone a witness to the faithfulness of our God? Come on, is anyone a witness to the faithfulness of our God? I know you are. It's his faithfulness that has brought you this far. We're going to sing all the verses. The lyrics will be on screen. We invite you to join us in the singing of this great hymn of the church. It reminds us the faithfulness of our God. Come on, let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. Let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow. There is no shadow of turning. Thou changest not. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. And as thou hast been, as thou hast, and forever wilt be, forever. Now come on, let's lift the refrain. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy Let's lift it together. Come on. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, sun, moon, and stars in their courses. They join with all nature. Join with. Church, let's lift it up. It's our King. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Every morning it's new. Morning by morning, new mercy I see. So all that I've needed, all that Great is, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Last verse, pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence.
lift your voices together and declare that great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. New mercies I see. All that I have needed. All Alumni, class of 2022, repeat after me. I am, I am CBS. CBS. I am, I am CBS. CBS. Gentlemen, will you remove your hats for the benediction? Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. God of all creation, all knowing all-powerful, always-present God. We praise you today for the CBS graduating class of 2022. May they forever represent the College of Biblical Studies and continue building the legacy of Dr. Mays and many others who have crossed over this threshold of grace. Now, as we commence forward, here we are, Lord, like the young Samuel ministering in the temple, we are ready to serve. Like Jesus' first disciples, we are ready to follow. Like the early church, we are ready to glorify God. Here we are, Lord. We have heard your call. Now with the presence of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we carry that call into your world and everybody said amen please remain standing for the recession